we're going to play tic-tac-toe, but different. So we've got the normal tic-tac-toe, right? You've got your little grid, you've got your noughts and crosses, right? And you win if you've got a whole row or column or diagonal. But what if we're going to change the rules, okay? I'm going to say you only win if you get this little fella. We're going to give him a name. We're going to call him Tic in some orientation, which means you can't have diagonals. But I'm going to allow you to play on a bigger grid. So you're going to play on a four by four grid. Now, we've got two players. I'll give them two colour pens. Um, I'm going to be both players, but it doesn't matter. Because what I want to show you is the first player can always win. We know in tic-tac-toe you can force a draw, right? This version, where we're just going for straight, it can be vertical, but the first player is always going to win. So the first player might say, I'm going to play a cross here, which is exactly what the first player should do. Right, now the second player. We want to avoid getting three in a row. So we kind of have a few choices, right? We want to go up, left, or right of one of these. So you know what? I'm going to put a question mark in this one and in this one. Second player has played one of those. I don't actually care which at this stage. Because what the first player is going to do is now play this one. Now where can a second player play? Well, it kind of doesn't matter because they've already lost at this point. <laughs> if they play here, first player will just go there. If they play here, first player will go there. So the first player is always going to win this tic-tac-toe if they play sensibly. It is possible to lose as the first player, but that means you've done bad. <laughs> so <laughs> you've gone messed up if you've lost as player one. Uh, it is always possible to guarantee you win. So for this, we'll say that if the board size n equals four by four, that you can win in three moves. Okay, gonna bring another friend to the table. This little chap, we're gonna call this guy L. He's like an L shape. And actually with L, on a three by three board, you can win in three moves. So you can win in fewer moves. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to decide how. Um, and obviously actually when I say four by four, it's really greater than or equal to, because if the board's bigger, you can still do it. Okay, what if we go into four squares? Oh, hang on, here was you thinking this is tic-tac-toe, but I've snuck in the polyominoes. So we've got our trominoes. This is gonna be now our tetromino. So I'm gonna call this little friend Ellie, because it's like L, but bigger. And Ellie can win on any board with at least four squares in four turns. Okay, I'm gonna give, give some more, because we all know there are more tetrominoes than this. And this is where I admit that these namings aren't my own. This is Nobby. I did not come up with these names. These sets of games have a name collectively. They're called Animal Tic-Tac-Toe. These are our animals. We've got Tick, L, Ellie, Nobby. Um, and the idea is, when can you win the Tic-Tac-Toe where your goal is to get the animal on the grid? So for Nobby, we need N is greater than or equal to five, and Nobby can guarantee a win in four moves. What about if we go for this pal? I'm going to call this one Snooty. This is my name, because you can boot the snoot. And Snooty also is guaranteed a win, but in n greater than equal to three, actually, but this is going to take five moves to guarantee the win. One thing you might notice is that if n is greater than equal to three, there are nine squares on the grid. And to have five moves on nine squares, that means the the grid is filled. But that's something interesting. So far, this has been three squares and taken three moves. Three squares, three moves. Four squares, four moves. Four squares, four moves. This is four squares. This is five moves. So we'll call these all winners because you can guarantee to win. But there clearly there's some hierarchy here, right? These guys, you can win in the minimum number of moves. So we're going to call them economic winners. So this game of animal tic-tac-toe was come up with by a man named Frank Harare, and he coined the term economic winner. This is a winner, but not an economic winner. Another winner that's not economic, the worm. And now the worm needs a seven by seven grid, at least, and this takes eight moves. Right, there is one tetromino I'm missing here. And it's our little friend, Boxy. Is Boxy going to be an economic winner? Is Boxy going to be a winner at all? No. Boxy's a loser. <laughs> Sucks to be you, Boxy. What do we mean by loser? Well, actually, it means that there's a strategy where you can always prevent Boxy from 
being won by your opponent. Um, now this is saying player two, the second player to play, isn't necessarily going to win themselves, but they can at the very least force a draw. So how do you do that? All right, I'm going to need a new piece of paper to show this. Let's imagine our grid. And what we're going to do as player two is domino it up. So we're going to draw little boxes like this, and we're going to shift this one along and go like that. And essentially, your strategy as player two is whenever player one plays in one of the dominoes, if player one puts a cross here, bam, you go into the other one. If player one were to put a cross here, bam, circle here. And now it is impossible to find a box that doesn't require a full one of these dominoes. So it's impossible for player one to create boxy. Now, you're not saying you're going to win necessarily as player two. You, it might be a draw, but you can force at least a draw. Avid number four fans will realise that I've already done a video on pentominoes. So in true blue pieces style, here is one I prepared earlier, and we're going to categorise all the pentominoes. Right, so there are 12 pentominoes. Three of these are winners. They're not economic winners, but they are winners all the same. And the three winners, this one, this one, and this one. So these are all winners. Every other one is a loser. So every other one, we can find a domino pattern. Now, the one I particularly want to draw your attention to, though, is this one. Because this is a different kind of loser to the other. And the reason why is every other one um, is what we call a basic loser. But this contains Boxy. We've got our little friend Boxy here. And because it is made up of another loser, if we can prevent Boxy, we can definitely prevent this one, right? Anything that contains a loser is going to be a loser in itself. Because um, you just can prevent the inner loser and the bigger loser loses. So, this one we don't even need to check. We don't need to find any kind of pattern for that. So Boxy is a basic loser. These fellas are basic losers. Basic L. BL. I'm not going to name all of them, but they're all basic losers as well. So that's pretty much, that's all the pentominoes categorised. Now, the heptominoes, when we're looking at six. Of the heptominoes, all contain basic losers apart from four. So there are four that might be winners still, not basic loser inside. So these four are, well, we've got this fella, three on top, three on bottom. So this fella, we can show as a basic loser, bad luck. I've got this little munchkin, also a basic loser, shame. Um, we have a beautiful friend here, basic loser, done. Um, and now we have one of these that I actually am going to give a name, because my heart has been stolen by little Snakey. Is Snakey a basic loser? We don't know. We know every hexomino except for Snakey. Um, and this carries forward for heptominoes. Every heptomino now contains a basic loser already. So every heptomino is a loser. And then by extension, every oxomino is a loser. All the others are a loser. We have categorized every polyomino except snaky. Now for the purist, I'm sure you're going to want to know what the domino patterns are for all of them. So we've got this kind of domino pattern where they're in twos like this. And that works for boxy. That also works for the pentomino S shape, and it works for one of our friendly hexominoes. So this domino strategy will block all of these. The simplest domino strategy, they're just kind of your bog standard pairs. This blocks an awful lot. This knocks out our W pentomino. This knocks out our F pentomino. It knocks out our X or plus. It knocks out the T. So if in doubt and you really can't remember which one you want, this is a good one to guess. And it also blocks out one of our hexominoes, this one. We've got something kind of similar, but instead we have two like this, and then we've got two like this, and so on. These are all perfectly beautiful, accurate squares. This blocks out our U pentomino. So this is the strategy, the domino strategy to win with a U. We keep going. And then we can do this one. This kind of domino strategy will block out long boy of pentomino. And the final one, which I think is the funkiest pattern of them all, is this pattern, which then you just keep going like this. 
So this domino pattern then blocks out this chap. And if you want to see this, actually, here's one I prepared earlier, a blue piece of fashion. So the domino pattern would be, see how it keeps going, again here. And one thing you can see is there is nowhere I can put my little hex domino that is going to mean it doesn't cover a whole domino. Here it covers this domino, here it covers this domino. I really recommend taking them and playing. But the moral of this is despite the fact that we have now categorized either um, winning strategies for some of our earlier tech dominoes and dominoes, um, we have our economic winners, we have our winners, we have our losers, we have our basic losers, and then there's little Snakey, and we just don't know what to do with them. So let's give Snakey some love, and hopefully soon we'll find out what's going on. Slightest understanding of how to play it. I mean, you might be able to beat a small child, but anyone who has any competence can draw a game of tic-tac-toe. In other words, manage not to lose it. And this I view as a flaw of the game, and that's what we're here to talk about. How can we improve tic-tac-toe?